This is VOA News. I'm Joe Ramsey. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken said Sudan's warring generals had agreed to a 72-hour ceasefire starting Tuesday after 10 days of urban combat killed hundreds, wounded thousands, and sparked a mass exodus of foreigners. Previous bids to pause the conflict failed to take hold, but Blinken said, quote, following intense negotiation over the past 48 hours, The Sudanese armed forces and the rapid support forces have agreed to implement a nationwide ceasefire starting at midnight on April 24th to last for 72 hours. Western Arab and Asian nations raced to extract their citizens from Sudan on Monday as the UN chief warned of the risk of wider repercussions and urged international powers to exert maximum pressure for peace. Since the start of fighting on 15 April, Hundreds of people have been killed and thousands injured. The violence must stop. It risks a catastrophic conflagration within Sudan that could engulf the whole region and beyond. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres. Sudanese in Khartoum on Monday said they feel left behind. Reuters correspondent Freddie Joyner reports. Sudan, on the brink of a civil war, is seeing its capital city of Khartoum quickly become a ghost town, causing citizens to fear worsening conditions as buses arrive to pick up individuals fleeing for safety. Tens of thousands of Sudanese have fled Sudan to neighboring countries since fighting between the military and the well-armed Rapid Support Forces paramilitary group started on April 15th. At least 420 people have been killed. The conflict has also triggered a humanitarian crisis in the impoverished country where millions of people have been left without access to basic services. This is VOA News. Kenya's president says the starvation deaths of dozens of followers of a pastor are akin to the results of terrorist acts, as the death toll has risen to 73. Mohamed Youssef reports from Nairobi. Kenyan security forces and residents of the coastal town of Malindi continue to recover the bodies of people who starved themselves to death after following the teachings of Good News International Church, Pastor Paul McKenzie, Kenya's Inspector General of Police, Jafet Kaome, said an additional 11 bodies were exhumed from McKenzie land in Shakahola Forest on Monday. He said 29 people were rescued. Mohamed Yusuf for VA News, Nairobi. U.S. President Joe Biden has honored America's best teachers, praising them for going above and beyond for their students. AP Washington correspondent Sagar Magani reports. In the Rose Garden, the president said teachers do things like bringing snacks for hungry students. Spending your own money, your own money on school supplies. And face the unique challenges of today's teachers. Explaining unexplainable, from banned books to duck and cover drills. Amid a plague of deadly school shootings. Teaching should not be a life-threatening profession. The event honored Teachers of the Year from every state, with Oklahoma's Rebecca Peterson named the top teacher. Sagar Magani, Washington. Prosecutors in the U.S. southern state of Georgia will reveal this summer whether former President Donald Trump will be charged with crimes related to interfering with the 2020 election, the Atlantic District Attorney said on Monday, according to the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. Fulton County District Attorney Fawny Willis, in letters sent to local law enforcement agencies, said she would disclose charging decisions sometime during the Fulton County Superior Court's summer term which begins on July 11th and concludes on September 1st, the newspaper reported. A magnitude 7-point earthquake struck west of Indonesia's Sumatra Island on Tuesday, Indonesia's geophysics agency said, triggering a tsunami warning. The European Mediterranean Seismological Center earlier pegged the quake at 6.9 magnitude, The quake at a depth of 84 kilometers triggered a tsunami warning. The country's meteorology department added. The agency asked local authorities to immediately instruct residents of the affected area to move away from shores. India's disaster mitigation agency said authorities were collecting data from the islands near the epicenter. I'm Joe Ramsey.
Thank you for watching. Can you do me a favor? Please leave a comment in the comment section below. That would really help. Thank you and see you again soon.